and uh, the mouse, the mouse the right. And we all know that you know it's uh, you know, eighty percent of the water used in the in the world is for agricultural purposes, is for food. What we may not be fully aware is that the enormous amount of trade that takes place among nations of water, because when you are trading food among nations, you are really trading water, virtual water. And uh, if I can, okay. I will leave it there, I won't touch it. Well, how do I change? This one? Okay. And I just went over this, you know, and, uh, and uh, so what you really have among nations is a, a, a complex network, and I will elaborate a little bit more why of the name complex in this particular network of uh, water trades, which is uh, virtual water trade. I want to ask two questions in this talk. One is how do the properties of the global virtual water trade network evolve in time, and how well can we model that network? If we model that network, and I am a fan, really, of, 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 of quantitative type of modeling, both in the geosciences, which is my own field, hydrology, and also when I am talking about other problems like this one, because it's, it's the way to implement the scenarios. It's scenarios related to climate change, it's scenarios related to policy, it's scenarios related to anything. I mean, we are not going to take the decision, but we have to help some people to take the decision in a quantitative manner. So, can we build models that do reproduce the properties of that network. This is just a little slide that Antonio was reminding me <laughs> the other day that uh, you know how much water we consume in the food is really amazing. You know, when you take a one kilogram of meat, it, that kilogram of meat in a global basis, more or less, an average is 15,000 liters of water embedded into it. 15,000 liters of water had been used in coming up with a kilogram of meat. This is a 4,500 is for a I guess it's for a steak, and, uh, and uh, something like 3,200 for a kilogram of chicken, etc., etc. In the case of livestock, the amounts of virtual water embedded is much larger. You have to grow the hay, the, you know, the typical age of a cow before you slaughter the cow and these type of things. And those are numbers that are, I will not get into that, but are very well calculated for different parts of the world. Now, how do we build the global virtual water network? Here comes a little bit of hydrology. This is a particular model developed mainly by Hanasaki, which is part of our group working in that. He's in Japan, of course. And, uh, and what you do is divide the world in uh, small, relatively small uh, cells of half a degree in general terms. And you do monthly, year by year, on a monthly basis, the hydrologic balance of a cell, meaning the temperature of the cell, the average uh, precipitation, not only that, we incorporate the dams. Every dam over 15 meters is incorporated. And this is quite, it's nothing, neither complicated nor complex. It's just tiring to do it, okay? Because it's just a, a, a water balance. And uh, you know, these models, uh, hydrologists are pretty familiar how to do them. So I ask you to trust me that they are, recent, I mean, fairly well done. And then the virtual water content in any particular product is just the, uh, well, it's the evapotranspiration if we're talking about the crop. And, and it's the, uh, the evapotranspiration used by the crop divided by the yield. And this is, you know, virtual water content, you have, you have it here, virtual water content by kilogram of crop. ET will be about evapotranspiration of a country C of a particular crop. And when I put in their source of water, it's because there are two different sources of water, well, there are many different sources, but two very important differences. One is what we call blue water. The, the, the water that the plant uses directly from the, from the soil moisture, from the precipitation, we call that green. And blue water, which is a very different type in terms of economical cost and all what it involves, which is mini water coming from irrigation that you take directly from dams or from groundwater, or groundwater uh, aquifers, okay? So, uh, we can build networks of green water, or blue water, or total water. Here I will be talking about total water, but I could show you if you are interested, the networks of green water and global water. This, uh, and blue water, I'm sorry, same thing. We can talk about uh, uh, trays among nations of, uh, of, of uh, different products, wheat or, or meat or whatever, but here I will be encompassing all of them 
for purposes of this presentation. And so well, how we build a global virtual water trade network is the following, is, is we go through, let me go through this for a moment, let me, I will go back to this one. We go through, again, not complicated, just very tiring for some poor graduate students. You go to the, all, uh, the FAO statistics year by year for the agricultural organization trade statistics and we go over 58 crop and livestock commodities and they give the amount of trade between different nations. And then every month of every year, we know how much water has been embedded in a particular product, in a particular crop. And after that, we know through these statistics also what is the percentage, you know, in different commodities, in different, in different things that, that are traded of the crop that we're talking about. Okay, we can be using many things. And we go through this, you know, well, so product by product. At the end of the day, what we have is very large data sets, that's all, files, in which then we built, let me see if I can go back. No, I cannot go back, but that's all right. Oh, can I go back or not? All right, what the hell. Then you, you build the virtual water trade network, which will be VWT from country A to country J, will be the transpiration or, I'm sorry, will be the trade that we have of, of a certain crop from country I to country J times the virtual water content in that particular crop. Nothing dramatic in there. Very easy to understand and just laborious to do. And at the end, we build something like this. This is a representation of the Global Virtual Water Network at, uh, you know, I'm not making a difference between blue and green water. Also, in this one, you see, uh, we could start making a lot of sophistication there, which we have done, I will not get into that, because uh, you can have a directed type of network in which the action goes in one way, you distinguish between the action between, you know, uh, Japan and the United States, United States, Japan, or you just say, all right, let's not be direct, let's add the two things is in the interaction between the two countries. So one is an undirected network, the other is a directed network. In the directed network, you can also, you know, uh, uh, it's as simple as the other one. Most of the things I will be talking, not all of them, will be about the undirected one because we can infer a lot of things from that one. Immediately here, you see, for example, there are two important, I mean, there are, I think we have there something like 184 nations are not all the nations of the world because there are some island countries which practically have no trade. So we are not included, but almost every other country is there. And, uh, and uh, you see that is not very different of the thing that you see, for example, in the internet, in the graphs of the internet. Um, in here, of course, in the internet, it's again, it's a network, and uh, what you see, for example, in communications or in traveling people in uh, air, uh, airplanes and, 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 and uh, between uh, different airports of the world, you know, a lot of this have been going on now in nature and science in this type of journals. And uh, each one of those arrows has a strength. In the case of internet, is the number of clicks. It used to be Google by the, by the, the big node, uh, node. It used to be the one with the highest strength, the highest number of of clicks, it's not anymore, it's Facebook nowadays. It, uh, Google went way down to the second place, it's now Facebook. But in here, the strength of each arrow, the weight, whatever you want to call it, is the amount of virtual water involved in that arrow between the two countries. And, uh, okay, two questions now to go very quickly over this is how the properties of that network have evolved in time and second, can we model the statistical properties of that? Important thing, very important, but we have to see the first one to see what is the amount, the, 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 the size of the task we have in front of us. But the second one is extremely important because it will allow us then, as I said before, to implement the scenarios, a, a different type of scenarios. And, uh, okay, this is a very dynamic type of dead work. And uh, you can see here from 1986 to 2009, 2008, I'm sorry, how, for example, the number of, the mean number of, 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 of uh, uh, the mean degree of a node is the number of connections the node has, okay? 
and we are this graph is for the undirected network. So mean number of connections either exporting or importing. Frequently, both things go on between the uh, pairs of countries. And it has gone dramatically up. We are talking 1986, huh? that's not last century. And the evolution of the total number of links, how much communication has increased, how much linkage the network has grown into times from 1986, you also see it in the right hand side of the graph, and it has increased dramatically too. So, you know, we immediately have, okay, we cannot do an static type of, 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 of a study of this. We have to study the dynamics of it. Now, the strength or the weights are, uh, as I said, the, the total amount of water embedded in those connections, in those links. And from 1986, look where it was, and now how it's increasing. And, uh, and one is the mean strength of a node is increasing like that. And the other is the total strength. And uh, in there, well, it's 10 to the 9. We are talking about uh, uh, billions, American billions, of uh, cubic meters. Um, just uh, the difference between countries, when you look, when you look at the, the, do you know how countries rank? Let's not go into the detail of that. It will take a long time. But this is an example. Uh, uh, the largest number of export trade partners, Denmark, Netherlands, now is United States, but Netherlands for a long time was, num well, several years was number one, and the reason is the, the, the harbor of Rotterdam. I mean, it, it, it takes the product, does somewhat of, a, a, you know, increased value or whatever, and re-export the products, okay? Now, and then in the, in the right-hand side is the largest number of import trade partners, and in that one is the USA still by far. Now, the uh, same thing with respect to now the strength of, of, uh, of sports volumes. The USA had been, uh, the United States had been for, at least in that period from 1986 to now, by far the, 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 the dominant uh, country in there. And the largest import volume is China. And you can see everything was okay, USSR, Japan, okay meaning, you know, was kind. And then it jumps dramatically from 2004 on. That has a clear explanation is until 2004, China had a, a policy of, um, which prohibited the importation of soy. With the change of diet in China, which has, the pressure was large anyway, the, 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 that prohibition was lifted in 2004. Soy, of course, as we all know, is the wonderful thing which mixed with a, a, a um, livestock uh, uh, feed to increase the proteins of the animal, okay? So it's going up dramatically there to a point in which, you know, this has, has had enormous consequences, and I will not get into that. But, uh, you know, uh, let's see if we have, uh, maybe include that slide. Yep. And uh, again, this is now the largest export volume. Okay, this is the one that I just described. And here is, here is China, you see this, uh, this uh, how it has increased in, in the soy. Not so much in the other thing. Wheat and corn are remain more or less the same. We are talking virtual water in here. And when you take a more careful look, what is responsible, where, where is that reflected? Not so much in the United States. The United States has increased, and it has increased considerably, but the exportation of soy to China, but much more so to countries, Brazil and Argentina. This, I believe this is Argentina, which by the way, has seen the process of becoming a monoculture type of country. Huh? So over 75% of the, of, the, of the agriculture is going to soy. There is one country that is buying all the soy at a very good price, and that's China. So, uh, and the other country even larger than that is Brazil. And that has an impact in deforestation and, and these type of things. Now, uh, this is how the Virtual World Trade Network has changed from 1986 to 2007. Again, it's not a long period of time at all. Look at in 1986, you know, the largest flow was from the North American, meaning uh, in this case, really mainly Mexico, but mainly Canada, United States and Canada, to Asia, 27.7 billion cubic meters. Now, when you look at 2000, and look from South America to Asia, well, it was very little. Huh? A very narrow tap. I didn't put the number there. Probably less than 12. And now, when you go to 2007, 
The largest one is South America to Asia, 81.5. That's the impact these policy decisions are taking in the trade of virtual water with a lot of repercussions that we will see in, in several aspects. This is, again, the evolution as a percentage of 1986 values. And take a look at different things. The orange dots are GDP, how it has changed. Because these are interesting things to take into account then for a predictive model. Um, the, blue, the, the, the second one is light blue, or whatever you want to call it, is the flow of, uh, of water. It's also increasing. And it is increasing more or less parallel to GDP. That immediately gives you an idea. Hey, GDP is a variable to be considered here. On the other hand, you get in there the number of links increase, but it's getting to a maximum. Why? Because you know you have a number of countries. The number of links cannot go above a certain value, just by combinatorial theory. And then the black things is population. I agree with uh, Igor Sager. You know, it's, uh, it's 1948. There were one billion children. 2008. There were two billion children. And one question that I was I saw the other day in a talk in a, in Princeton by decision was how many children do you think you'll be in 2100? And people started, you know, five, six billion, seven billion, two billion. Two billion, it's becoming stable. And, uh, and, uh, and the, 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 the magenta, I think is the name of that one, is rainfall of our agricultural area. Why rainfall of our agricultural area? Because most of agriculture, not all of it, but most of agriculture comes from green water. So, you know, that thing could be impacted, in fact, is impacted by two. Uh, factors. One is policy, how much agriculture area going to place, and the other one is, is climate going to change? I mean, it's going, it's, it are climatic variations in rainfall, and not only in the amount. You know, in many of this, uh, of the water that we have is via glacier, via snow melt, and so on. So it has an enormous impact. A two years, a, a, an increase in temperature which makes the snow melt, the, the runoff, uh, the spring runoff, comes earlier than when it is needed, when the crops need the, the, the water. So that, that, those type of things have a dramatic impact, and that's something that we'll be taking a look at. Now, the water saving, the virtual, uh, the trade network saves a lot of water. Uh, why? Because, you know, the, uh, the virtual wa the water saving from country I to J in a particular crop is the trade from I to J times the difference in the virtual water that is in country J, meaning the one that is importing that will spend a lot of work, minus the virtual water containing that crop from the country that is exporting. All kind of crazy things you see when you look at these statistics, you know. When I just, as, you know, you suddenly see there are some years in general, the, the beginning of the year 2000, that you see uh, Saudi Arabia exporting like crazy you know, you know, in the trace of in, in the trace of wheat, for example, and you look at the statistics, and that's are, are true. FAO is pretty good in the statistics. Uh, uh, just to finish this comment, I guess after the oil embargo, Saudi Arabia decided that uh, there was a, in the 70s there was a risk of suffering a, a, a food embargo, and so it was a policy: we have all the energy we we need and the money. Let's do intensive wheat. Cultivation. Well, uh, they couldn't do it. I mean, after a while, it was being extremely more expensive to produce the wheat than just to import the wheat. But worse than that, the Arabia has a very shallow aquifer, and really most of the water is in the fossil aquifer that is being depleted very quickly. So they stopped that. Now what Saudi Arabia and, for example, China does that, also in South Korea, is they have leases of enormous extensions of land in many countries. And you lease, the country leases the land. In Ethiopia, in Congo, in, in um, Brazil, they are for leases of land in which the, 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 the country that is leasing the land raises the crop. And of course, you lease the land in countries where they have good rain and good soil, which is the thing that you will, no, this poses all kind of questions. I will not get into that. But all kind of questions are how valid are those leases in the long term? I mean, will everybody obey this? The, 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 but anyway, this is the water saving that are there. And uh, main, uh, the, the network is saving a lot of water, in fact. It, this trade 
because people, nations tend to trade from, uh, you know, countries that do have the water, for example, the case of Brazil with the soy, and China, who is terribly pressed by water, especially in Northern Plain, where the aquifer has been depleted very fast, almost all of it is depleted now, both the shallow and the deep water. There are two aquifers there. And, uh, and, uh, and so there are savings in this trend, and the most, most of the saving is, is here in the wheat. Although you can also see in soy, which was in the negative, it's already positive, and there is, you know, there is a little bit of saving in all of them, but wheat is fundamentally important in these savings on the, on, the, on the network. Now, some properties of network before we start uh, very quickly to model it. Things that you want to, when you see a network like that, and in this case it's the virtual water train network, but could be, say, say, you know, nowadays biostatisticians are doing all these kind of things in network, linking different things, et cetera, and communication people, et cetera. You, you, one thing is the degree of the node. How many connections does the node has? That's very important. And the other particular property is the strength of the node. That is the sum of the water imported or exported, or the sum of both, that the node has on itself, ascribed to itself. When you look at the node degree distribution throughout the years, it follows pretty good exponential type of distribution meaning it's well described an exponential time, although you see the mean value of that exponential, how it is increasing with time dramatically. When you look at the, okay, another thing that you like, like to look in, in networks is the, the degree of the nearest neighbor as function of your own degree. Meaning, you know, if I am poor, am I trading on the average with poor people, or I'm trading on the average with rich people, and this type of things. And, uh, and um, you can do that in two ways. An unweighted, you know, you look at the degree of, your nearest, of the nearest neighbor in an unweighted fashion, or you weight the, 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 the computation by the strength of the link. And in the red lines, well, sorry, the black lines show the unweighted type of, uh, and you see which, with nodes or nations, with lower degrees, has a lot of connections, okay? Lots of connections. And when you increase the node, the, the, the degree of the node, the number of connections tends to decrease. Now, that's called the sortative type of network. But when you, when you weight the connection, which is the, right, the red lines, that immediately disappears. And, uh, you know, if, if, if you are a high degree node, you will be trading, you know, at high level. This is a rich tough phenomena, meaning, you know, if you are rich, you tend to train to, to trade with the rich. And in fact, what is going on is that the, 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 the small nations are trading a lot among them. In fact, we will see that a cluster type of phenomena. But the ones that put it together, the whole, the whole network, are the large nations, the nations with large degree of virtual water exported and imported. Um, this I went over that, and this is, uh, oop. Now, now this is the clustering. Again, it's a measure of networks, I will not get into it. It's, well, uh, the, the, it's the formula is the one that you have in there, the clustering coefficient is two times e, e sub i. e sub i is the number of links, or meaning number of links among the neighbors, or meaning the number of triangles, closed triangles associated with the neighbor. And the denominator of the equation is just the total possible number of links, ki times ki minus one, of a, of a node with degree ki. And the second one is the weighted. Uh, when you weight that, that, that computation, but also by, by, by the strength. And a similar phenomenon, the one that you, we saw before, is immediately seen. Interesting thing, <coughs> centrality, you know, Centrality is how central, how important is, is a node, is a country, in communicating virtual water among all different countries. And in networks, we use that one, which is the ratio of the number of shortest, uh, shortest paths between I and J, and the total number of paths that go between A and J that goes to the particular node. That's measure how central is a node in the connectivity. And you can see that, uh, that uh, it follows a pretty nice power law uh, um, I mean, just 
a regression type of power law. I'm not talking about statistical power law. They know the strength nevertheless. Remember, they know degrees follow an exponential one. They know the strength when you take the strength of an odd, meaning the total water in Porto de Sport, it doesn't follow an exponential. Uh, you could make, maybe make a case for a power law, but it's much better. It goes much better in a statistical test, but it's called a stretched exponential, which again, is a fat tail type of distribution with the variance may or may not exist. And what it tells you is that, again, there's a fat tail. Uh, 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 strengths with very large values are highly likely and uh, are associated with some very specific countries. Now, this is no strength versus the no degree. That's again a power type of, uh, of, of a regression. And interestingly enough, the, the exponent of the regression doesn't change much at all. And this is nice. Because that means, hey, if when I built a model, I want to reproduce that type of, of, of thing that we are seeing. And you see the, the, the exponent changes a little bit oscillates over the year, but not, not, it's not a gigantic change at all. That seems to be pretty stable. In fact, there are reasons for that. So a bit, little bit of dynamics, and I have to in a hurry. The mean and total trade of trade connections has uh, doubled in 22 years. The volume of water trade has tripled in the same period. The water saving had increasing mainly through trading of wheat. And uh, that's what saves a lot of water. And in fact, 40% of, 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 of the virtual water trade was in there. And uh, we already talked about the exponential and the stretched exponential type of distribution. And the between the centrality versus degree is a power law. Now, um, how do we do the model? Very quickly. A model is a model of this type of network, one of the type of models, uh, or the model how I like to approach this type of network is the following. I have to explain the topological properties of the network, and I have to also to explain the strength, the number of clicks in the internet, and here will be the amount of water associated with every link. So the way to do it is through uh, calling statistics fitness uh, uh, variables or fitness quantities. You attach to a node some quantities that hopefully will help you to explain the statistics of the topology of the network and the statistics of the strength or, or, or weight associated to the links. And, uh, and um, you see, in here you orient yourself, in practical terms, I will see a moment that, via regression, you know, you say, you immediately think, okay, GDP is going to, even, even if I tell you that GDP is an important variable, you know, you know, you won't say how you, you will not know how to connect. Even if I tell you, if even the Lord tells you, okay, there is a very nice regression between GDP and node. You will be able, probably, and, and degree of the node to give the nodes of the different, uh, the degrees of the different nodes. But now, how to connect them? That's another business. That's where the networks take place, and that's what a model like this tends to do. Oop. In about five minutes, I will, I will be through. Now, can, OK. The, is, um, I will not get into the mathematics, but you try to determine Pxi xj, which is the probability that nodes i and j endowed with fitness xi and xj are connected. And this is found through entropy uh, maximization. It's, in fact, we follow there the paper by Newman and, and, and uh, which is the other one, Chan, I think. Anyway, it will be in a moment. In Physical Regulators 2004, I think it is. And, uh, you know, we start with a, a, an ensemble constraint to have a specified degree sequence. And uh, then we maximize the probability that, uh, that, uh, that the graph will have a, that particular sequence subject to the constraint that the network that I obtain has as mean values those observed in the real case. Uh, look at Mario, what you did. You froze this in. <laughs> now there it is. And that's what I just say. Uh, Park and Newman 2004, that's physical regulators. And that's what just, I just say in the world that, that, uh, that uh, that's what you do. The mathematics could be explained. But what, uh, let me go over this quickly because we don't have much time. Uh, you can also do the same type of thing in directed and undirected networks. 
And this is an example of how good is it fitting. For example, the probability distributions of the, of the, of the no degrees, the probability distribution of the strength, the power, the, the, the clustering coefficients, these models reproduce very, very well these characteristics. Let me go quickly. And these are, those were topology, those were degrees of nodes. These are a strength. And again, black points are real values. Red are the model. I will skip the theoretical framework, which Park and Newman is really following a well-known statistical mechanics type of methodology to maximize the, the uh, you know, grand partition functions, et cetera, to maximize the entropy. And the fitness model, this is my last part, works like this. You have you are, going to, uh, you, know, you are going to assign a fitness variable to each node of country. In the case of the topology, for the degree of the node, it is found that the fitness variable is GDP. So we assign GDP to a, country's X, uh, to a, to a country uh, I, XI. And then we compute the XI, which is the normalized GDP, normalized over the sum of all the GDPs for each node. What you do then, there it is, is all the mathematics that I skipped tells you that the probability of linkage, in this case, is given by that equation, very simple, in fact, where beta, where beta is fixed by setting the total number of links equal to a constant. So you can play scenarios. You can take out countries. You can put in countries. But once that you have those PIGs, you can have estimated no degree, and not only that, you can estimate any kind of property, of topological property of that network. And again, these are examples year by year. The fitting is very, very good, in fact, between model and, uh, and, uh, and real data. And now, if you go to a strength, the fitness variables is rainfall on agricultural area. To each node country, we assign a rainfall divided by agricultural area type of fitted variable. That is compute year by year in half a degree by half a degree cells through hydrologic balance. And after that, if you do the mathematics, the equation that comes, the probability of link weight is given just by this product, sigma i sub i times i sub j, don't, where sigma is computed fixing the total flow of the network. Again, we, we do predictions, we put ourselves in 2004 and predict 2008 and see how well we are doing. But in there, we are using the rainfall of agricultural area and GDPs that we know for 2008, so we can show. In reality, you will have to extrapolate, if you ask me how the purposes are going to change to 2025, I will have to extrapolate those quantities with other models, meaning uh, climate change, I mean, whatever climatic models do I need. And, uh, and again, the, 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 the fitness, I'm sorry, the real data versus the, the model predictions are very, very good. This allows you, I am closing now, this allows you following type of games, or not, not no games, of really interesting experiments. You say, let me take a node out of the game. That's an interesting thing, and it has happened in the past. The fires of 2010 in Russia produce, uh, in order the Russia to control the price of wheat, of grain in Russia, in terms of uh, forbid exportation. That is taking a node out, completely out, of the export network, and how it impacted the network. In fact, the impact in there was that, if you want the quantity, that usually we carry around a 76, 78 uh, 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 amount of food, which is called the carryover from year to year. 78 days of food consumption in the world. Because of that, it came down all the way, I think it was 66. If that had happened, the same type of heat wave and fire that came in Russia had happened in the United States, has been centered in Chicago, that thing would have come down to 48 days, a value never seen in, a, in the stock of, of, of world grains. And easily, it would have quadrupled the price of grain. This type of, 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 of scenarios, you can play with these things. You can take a control. You can say, for example, the scenario of the Russia suddenly say, I'm sorry, China, let's open the importation of, of soy 
that, the, that things can be predicted and are very useful. I will stop right here, but the, the, if I, climate change, you know, when, when you say, okay, uh, let's implement this IPCC, you know, whatever scenario, and you say, okay, give me the temperatures the, in, in every pixel that I have, forecast of probably rainfall, with all the uncertainties it may have, one can make at least a statistical forecast with all the uncertainties that may have, but one can stick the neck out and say, this is what I think is going to happen, quantitatively speaking. I will leave it right there to see any questions. Thank you very much, okay?